Yeah, we're going to do a video on uh, Sea-Doo Challenger single engine that has, uh, we just put a new engine in it and we're just uh, uh, diagnosing the jet pump problem on it. It doesn't seem to want to get up on plane real good. It will get up on plane, but you got to kind of turn to the right as you're trying to get up and it'll get up and then it'll take off. So my guess either it's a bad wear ring, a damaged impeller, or it's a possibility someone has changed this impeller at one time and put the wrong one in it because these ones are really finicky and require the right impeller to be installed in them or else they will not get up on plane right. Anyways, we'll see what's up. So yeah, there's one hose inside of here you gotta disconnect. It's the cooling hose um, so you can pull this jet pump off. But uh, that's the new engine we put in and um, it runs really good but it definitely we still have the air box off of it because we just got back from the lake test. We usually leave them off when we do a lake test on it. Um, just so we can look at the carburetor and make sure nothing's amiss with that. But that all went good. But uh, just going to double check on this here pump. That hose is hard to reach in there. Got to drop the speedo. This is one of the very few CDs where you got to take the speedo out to get the friggin' jet pump out, and it, it sucks always. Sometimes them screws do not want to come. Okay, mm -hmm. there you go. Pull it out. Hooking right here, anything? Easy. You gotta take that off too. Yeah. You gotta get that out like that. Don't break it. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. The wearing. Yeah, let's see what prop is in it. Dad, the prop really don't look that bad. The wear ring's not too terrible, man. My guess is they put the wrong prop in it. The way that thing was getting on plane just for a few holes in that in that impeller. Look at that right there. It's, I mean, that, there's some couple of gnarly holes in there, but I just don't think that's it. Anyways, let's pull it out. So I did look up that impeller. This is the one we pulled off of that uh, Challenger. And it is a... 497 so that is actually off of an hx single seater sea dew jet ski so with a 720 engine so that is definitely not it um but we did have a scat we did have a brand new scat uh 1722 140 swirl um that is for that boat and we're going to put that in there and that'll run it So getting ready to reinstall, there is the new impeller. And um, one thing is though, is uh, uh, after reinstalling it, this is the second time we've had it off, it, the engine didn't want to crank over. Um, you know, we're thinking, hey, low battery, this and that. But so we loosened up the jet pump a little bit and the um, then it cranks right over, tighten down the jet pump and it stops cranking. So we we're 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 checking the size of the damper sometimes the dampers get kind of fat you know you put one behind the engine and then one on the end of the jet pump and that's almost a half inch in length right there and this in this case right here is just causing it to bind up the crank like it's putting too much pressure on it when you tighten down the pump so um i have seen people put shims in behind there and stuff like that to to move that out and if you look here you can kind of see a shim right there there's an old shim right there on there and so that is uh probably one of the things that was happening here so anyways we're gonna try to adjust the dampers so it doesn't put so much pressure pushing on the engine but thanks we're aligning the jet pump on this motor uh or actually the engine but uh we're gonna we got our thing in there sticking a couple shims in here i did it that's too much Dude, those bolts are so short. Let me see one of them. Okay, we're gonna add another shim. It's still a little bit tight. I'm gonna put a thin one on this side too.